Okay. Good morning all and a warm welcome to this morning's webinar on enterprising entrepreneurs the journey from vision to realization and i welcome mrs preeti mahadev for this morning she is the moderator and our active guest speakers mr gopinath nair mr shalini minotra and mr amitabh roy over to you ms mahadev thank you kainas ma'am good morning and welcome once again to the first of the two part series of enterprising entrepreneurs a journey from vision to realization and beyond so it is said that experience is a master teacher even when it is not our own experience while it is wise to learn from our own experiences it is considered to be wiser to learn from the experiences of others so here we are this morning to hear the experiences of our three guest speakers for today each of them is a creator in their own right an entrepreneur who has turned their vision into a reality and they are here today to share their unique stories of their journey i am honored to introduce all our guests for today let me begin with our guest a graduate of ihm pusa new delhi you have worked for 10 years with the taj group of hotels holding various progressive positions from fnb operations to convention center sales you have also had vast experience working with several banqueting companies you took charge of a key position in the e-commerce division with your next job profile within india's only flower retail company as you recognize the growing importance of digital business you worked to acquire new skills to learn the dynamics of e retailing by 2009 you ventured on your own e-commerce journey akash pari art was born out of a desire to create value for customers through identifying gaps in terms of products and bringing them to virtual marketplaces in your own words the ultimate purpose of your business would always remain to add value and joy to each consumer and their families in your entire work cycle a self made boss lady miss shalini minocha a warm welcome to you on today's panel thank you very much our next I'm, guest <laughs> i mean indeed yes, indebted to you for having me here thank you for having me here it's been our pleasure uh, our next guest for today is an alumnus of ihm bhuvaneshwar and an mba from pondicherry university with over 25 years of hospitality experience founder and ceo of the brand the great indian hotels resorts in amitava roy built the first property of tgi of 22 rooms in yelagiri a hill station in tamil nadu you have never looked back since starting your journey and your brand now proudly operates 21 hotels in 15 cities with over 1200 rooms and is growing rapidly your philosophy is to showcase true indian hospitality while living up to the ideology of atithi devo bhava through your brand tgi the growth of tgi has been phenomenal in the past 6 years and the awards won are a testament to this growth tgi was awarded as the best independent hotel chain in 2017 by today's travelers the promising hotel chain of the year 2017 by india international travel mart best hotel management and marketing company 2017 by epicurus and telangana tourism and the very recent and the most prestigious best hotel management company award from the chief minister of puducherry at hospitality and tourism congress national award of excellence 2019 Mr. Ramitavar Roy, it is indeed a pleasure to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. It is a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Our final but equally eminent guest for today 
is a restaurateur with over 20 years of hands-on experience in restaurant management, operations, team building, training, crafting integrated, integrated solutions, marketing, product development, and branding. You are currently founder and president of the Indian fast casual restaurant concept. Known by many as the force behind Tikka Way, a fresh Indian grill located in Connecticut, USA. You firmly believe that meals should make someone happy and fill them up, not weigh them down. Taking inspiration from traditional Indian tastes and flavors with a complex blend of spices, your brand Tikka Way brings balanced health and nourishing goodness to people. You operate with the values of purpose, that is a deep, deep belief in knowing what you're working for to create means and, and happiness in this world. Responsibility by always giving back and being responsible for your actions. Authenticity, being genuine with yourself and all those you meet. You remain as a trusted and a reliable source in discovering fulfilling new flavors and foods. And passion by putting a loving energy into every meal and relationship that you make. Mr. Gopi Nair, thank you so much for joining us today. And I would like to specifically add that Mr. Joy Mr. Nair is joining us from New Haven, USA, where the local time right now is approximately 2 a.m., if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Nair, if you could let us know. <laughs> oh, thank you for having me. It's, uh, it's an honor to be around. It's 1.45 a.m. here. Almost ah, two. Well, thank you. You. Thank you. Thank you so much for being here and agreeing to do this. Um, Absolutely. <laughs> so uh, let me begin my uh, questions. Today is the day when you are going to be sharing your unique journey and your stories with all of the audience. So I would like to begin with you, uh, Mr. Nair, if that is OK. Uh, tell us about you before Takeaway happened. So tell us about Gopi Nair before Takeaway. Well, uh, that's many years. You can see that it's not a, a, a couple of years for me to account for. But yeah, I, I graduated from um, IHM Bhuneshwar uh, in 95 with uh, Shalini and Amitabh uh, and many of my uh, uh, friends. Um, I joined the Taj group uh, in Chennai, Taj Coromandel, and had a fabulous six years working and growing with the Taj. And um, um, around the time, um, I, 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 I felt that I should explore a little bit more and maybe uh, study a little bit more um, and chose to get to U.S. for my master's. Um, I did my MBA from uh, North Carolina. Um, and after a brief stint with, uh, with retail industry, I moved up to New York to start an own venture in garments, very different from hotels and restaurants. Uh, didn't like it. I didn't like the eight to five uh, weekends of lifestyle because I was so drenched with the 14, 15 hours of uh, working in restaurants and hotels in Taj. Um, mm. So I joined a bunch of my friends, ex-Taj uh, colleagues in Connecticut and um, and grew a, a fine dining uh, Indian restaurant concept called Coromandel across Connecticut and New York. Um, yeah, um, so that's that was pre-takeaway, if you will. Oh, I see. Wonderful. Great to hear that. If I may ask Shalini ma'am the same question as well. Uh, if you could give us uh, an understanding of who Shalini Minocha was before Akash Pari Arts happened. Uh, okay. So uh, I'm going to sum up a journey of almost 15 years quickly uh, for you. Uh, out of which 10 years went by at the Taj. Uh, I started as an HOMT uh, uh, placed at the campus and uh, for me uh, I had also trained done my industrial training at the Taj Palace and I got placed at the Taj Palace as well. So for me the world of hotels uh, began and ended at Taj Palace. So I, I, I sort of uh, um, spent uh, about 10 years there moving from hotel operations all departments uh, restaurants mm -hmm. banquets uh, everything put together and then eventually um, uh, settled for convention center sales. There I handled various profiles uh, from, you know, growing at various levels 
so uh, starting from dealing with the marwadi community which i immensely thank for for where i am today uh, it they taught me how to think business had it not been oh. for them i would have not been here mm-hmm. um, so uh, deepest gratitude there i would say uh, the corporates the, they showed me how business happened outside the windows of the wonderful luxurious property that i was sitting in uh, and i also had the opportunity to handle some of the world's most important international conferences world economic mm-hmm. forums and g20s of the world and medical conferences um a very serious conferences which required 2 3 years of planning it was the mm-hmm. banqueting job that ta- taught me the power of planning because as i remember mr raman mehra used to be our general manager at that time and he used to say only one sentence to all of us in banqueting the success of any banqueting is threefold planning planning and planning it is there that i mastered strategy and planning dealing with my customers and i got to learn ki aisa hota kaise hai what hmm. drives business and once i was there for 10 years i started itching to get on the other side of the table um okay. you know i i wanted to be on the other side and i definitely did not want to be in a big corporate house because hmm. i had seen how structured and silo driven they were at that time i'm not sort of trying to be critical but that's how it appeared to me international mm. conferences okay yes and no i i had done it been there so nothing great to know but the marwadi community fascinated me like nobody's business and i also want to add something very interesting to this as a child of 2 year old i remember my memory takes me back to when i was 2 years of age i used to find it very interesting to go into a kirana shop and observe mm-hmm. how he organizes his store and how he goes mm-hmm. around selling his stuff so in my mind as i had started learning calculations and i went to my play school or school of 5 or 6 years of age i had started uh, you know taking 1 rupee from my mother every day and i used to go there to buy five toffees and in that one trip of 5 minutes i used to try and observe whatever i could so retail was dear to me as a child and and Five. you know that that seed was there it was it was never had the opportunity to emerge but all of this came together when when the right time and the right moment came up um so yeah of course after taj i joined a few banqueting companies since you all are in mumbai you would know of mayfair banquets it used to be yes great uh, it used to be a great banqueting place there and they were opening up banquets in delhi and i was mm. uh, looking after the delhi division uh, this the sales marketing and all that uh, in addition uh, the sales job gave me a lot of uh, training and access to a lot of techniques and the way to work so in a way i was getting prepared to handle people and groom to mm. deal with all kinds of stakeholders in that one job uh, yes of course after that uh, one thing led to another uh, i used to work very actively with the owner of fonds and petals because they used to do wedding decorations and i used to handle uh, a lot of these marwadis and he would and that time fidelio had been launched into taj uh, to you know operate our entire restaurants and everything uh, on that so i i was leading the deployment of that uh, software and i was co training my team as well So along with the uh, other teams so i used to often go back at one or two in the night when they would be winding up the wedding decorations after the wedding is over and he met me once and he asked me how come you are here so late in the night sales office closes down at 6 or 7 so i told him so somewhere at the back of his mind he knew that i have something to do with technology and i have something to do with sales so when mm. he started the e-commerce division and he wanted somebody who understood technology and understood sales he, he walked up to me and said why don't you do this um and as at I, that time uh, i had been to an award where i had seen that fonts and petals had won an e-tail award e-tail and you know all this was unheard of in those days nobody knew what e-tail was only the big mm. guns were getting awards in media and you know all the ogilvies of the world were getting awards and there was a chotu fonts and petals getting an award 
and that really excited me that you know these guys are doing something new these guys are doing something very futuristic and i must mm. plunge in even then if it means getting out of my league and uh, you know starting from the drawing board afresh i jumped in and then since then there has been no looking back never looking back <laughs> yes very a very uh, interesting journey i mean it's in a nutshell a journey can never be uh, uh, even when mr nayar was ex- uh, saying this some time ago i mean mm-hmm. you could never put this down in a few sentences and a few statements because there is so much of experience that has yes. shaped you who you are today so it's, it's great to know for more questions coming up for you ms shalini so let me sure. have a sure. word with uh, with mr mr roy uh, mr roy tell us something about uh, you before tgi yeah i uh, passed out in 1995 along with our uh, friend gopi salini and uh, vinita and other friends and uh, i got through as a management trainee with itdsc asok group of hotels so my start was very good because uh, generally it is like you know getting through management trainee is like uh, that time is a rare time so i started very well and uh, but in between always there was a drive for me to do something so while doing working also i was being like you know tried two times into some kind of a entrepreneurship which failed i could not do it and it continued in between i was little bored with the hotels and the hospitality so i thought of why generally what happens when you work as you say 15 16 hours of work on a daily basis and you know uh, always the grass looks greener on the other side so i in between ventured out in retail so i worked with reliance i worked with aditya birla for some time but then i found that no it is not uh, my cup of tea i was not enjoying i was not able to meet people sitting in that 9 to 5 job and it was very uh, what you call uh, when you know saturday or sunday when i am at home or coming back from uh, office at 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock i used to feel that i have done something wrong it's a, it's, a, it's a guilt uh, after coming out of the hotel so to be very frank few days i enjoyed and but then later it was not a enjoyment for me i was finding it boring the same old faces i'm seeing on a daily desk and all artificial light i always wanted to be you know when you were in the hotels and you are working uh, throughout my career is uh, uh, i am basically a chef uh, by the way and uh, then i moved towards fnb then moved towards general management so i have you know seen various part of the hotel uh, management and operating right so right. when you do that and you meet so many people it's so dynamicity is there i really started missing that so i said before it is too late let me go back then uh, that time we were staying in indore and uh, my wife works in a bank and uh, there was a time that uh, the family uh, got extended we have a kid we wanted to go to a smaller town where we have a little laid back attitude and uh, so we came uh, i got an opportunity with a sri lankan hotel chain called uh, atkins spins and that time they just ventured in 2007 so i joined them as a gm of a property in pondicherry so i came there and uh, then i had a phenomenal growth in that particular organization i become head of the head of their indian operations and i was operating from pondicherry and taking care of almost uh, eight hotels during that period So mm-hmm. till 2014, I was working with that company called Atkins Spins, and after that, uh, uh, the Sri Lanka was booming, tourism was booming. So they decided that no, they wanted to go back to, they don't want the uh, Indian operation to continue. So when that actually happened, uh, then suddenly it clicked that why not uh, do uh, let me uh, uh, live my own way. So then that 2014 on Pondicherry Beach Road while walking in the morning. the tgi thing came across so then i found this company called to the uh, the great indian hotels tgi hotels oh wonderful wonderful in fact uh my next question is going to be in that direction mr roy so uh what i want to know is that you know we've always heard that the word entrepreneur which is what all three of you are in your own right so this is taken from the the french word entrepreneur i hope i'm pronouncing it right forgive me kainas ma'am she is our uh, french expert here uh, but i hope i pronounced it right so entrepreneur means to undertake and that is what you have done each of you has undertaken a certain uh, a, a certain idea and you have created into an, something that is visible tangible 
Okay. Now, this particular word, entrepreneur, interestingly, it is speculated that it also finds its roots in the Sanskrit word, antaprerana. Antaprerana, literally, that means inner inspiration or inspiration from within. Now, what I want from all of you to understand is what was your inspiration to start this venture? I'll, I'll take Mr. Roy, uh, if you wouldn't mind uh, answering this question first. What? Or who was your inspiration to start something like this? And how did you interestingly come up with a name for your venture? Mr. Roy. Yeah, yeah this is, uh, see, um, I hail from a very small town of, uh, it's a part of West Bengal. It's called, uh, it's basically an army area called uh, Ichapur, where they have this ordnance factory is there. So it's a very small town. Generally, we know each other. Uh, everybody's parents are working in the same factory, ordnance factory. So we all are, you know, uh, there are only two schools, uh, one boy school and one girl school. So everyone studies in there only. So that is how I play. So when I did my hotel management itself, it was like I did not know I wanted to do something different from the normal regular uh, things. And it was always there in my mind that I don't want it to go for the normal studies. So as you said correctly mm -hmm. that, you know, that entrepreneur meaning that uh, from that uh, Sanskrit word, can you come again that word please, in, uh, inter, yes. you said something? It, it, is, it, is, it is speculated that it is uh, entrepreneur comes from antaprerna, antaprerna yeah, meaning inspiration yes. from within. So I have my friends, you know, always teasing me, Are you must be having a, a tower uh, or in your name, some, you know, road in your uh, small village. Because I can see after I did my hotel management, many people have followed me. I did not know that they have idolized me or they have seen me. Okay, this guy. Then my when I go back and see that my parents are talking about it, is that uncle came, his son is also doing it by seeing you, his daughter is also doing it. Then it was like a pride moment it comes. Similarly, when I started in 2014, this hotel management company, generally what happens for any entrepreneur, Everybody wants to do something. Everybody wants to, you know, uh, uh, to make something, to build something. To but the reality is that action. The, there are very, there are only one person of the people who really take an action on that part. When 2014 I started it, and I made that company, and it was, uh, it is like you know going on. I can see then like all the hoteliers who are my. There are senior hoteliers. There are many, you know, talented hoteliers. There are. He is doing it. Why can't I do it? So I can see suddenly in South India, I think uh, apart from like our asset light more model, apart from GRT and DRT also has left. There are hardly any uh, company who is handling all the four states are covered. But, you know, the, suddenly I can see there are nurse, nourishment of all kind of a uh, management company coming up. If Amitabh can do, I can also do. So I can see in that manner whether I'm successful or not. I could inspire a couple of people in my life. Oh, and regarding this name, come... regarding the name, name. Please go ahead, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah. Rega regarding the name, name is a something which is, you know, very, uh, it, it's like, uh, for me, it is like uh, when you walk across, when you, you know, in your daily life, you suddenly there should be something which will hit your mind. We wanted to do something in tier two and tier three cities because in uh, metro and A plus city, there are many brands, there are many hotels, there are many chains are there. So obviously we wanted to have a niche for ourselves. We thought of why not uh, the areas where people, the, the, the branded that time, I'm saying 2014, none of these big brands were actually focusing on the area of smaller towns, smaller cities like Rameswaram, like uh, Pondicherry, like uh, uh, the Trichy, all these places, there were none of the brands were there. So I thought, why not we go and we, uh, the the problem was that, okay, there are owners, there are many promoters who have hotels, who have money to invest in this hospitality business. Why not encourage them to come forward and uh, make hotels in a, a, a proper uh, star classified hotels and uh, three star, generally we run three to four star category of hotels. So why not, uh, you know, uh, motivate them to do it and make this tier two, tier three cities as a good destination for people to come and stay. So that is how the TGI concept came. And one day I was sitting with my family and watching Doom 3. 
there was a movie hindi movie american ka movie tha doom 3 and doom 3 that if you remember there is a circus company called the indian the great indian circus so okay. while watching it i suddenly struck me okay we wanted to showcase indian hospitality indian thing why not this great indian hotels so that that is the concept i got it and from there this tj was been born from that movie doom 3 <laughs> wonderful that is very interesting to know that is really really interesting to know uh, shalini ma'am this is the same question that i'd like you to please tell us something upon what or uh, yeah, who sure. has been your inspiration behind akash pari arts and how did you come to find out this name where did you get this idea from okay, uh, so who the answer is my daughter uh so uh, why my daughter my daughter was 11 years 10 years or 11 years of age when i founded this company um so the reason she is the inspiration is because i am a single parent now uh, given the situation that i was in i had to uh, she was in her teen uh, you know about to hit her teenage years and these days you know teenage starts at 10 or 10 years of age it's no longer 12 or 13 <laughs> so right. Uh, so i had started sensing the need basically she created the need for me to be around her her growing up years mm-hmm. created that need now mm-hmm. i started thinking that my work you know either i run after a good designation which i will get in a few years uh, to flaunt and have on my linkedin profile etc etc or i look mm-hmm. at my own priorities so i decided that uh, okay we are going to redo the priorities but at the same time nothing is going to suffer one is one is not going to uh, pay for the other in terms of the end result and and therefore i decided that you know uh, let's just go ahead and do this let's just take this plunge sooner than later let's do it ahead of its time b is that uh, again you know being a single uh, breadwinner for the family i wanted an employment which in which came uh, uh, you know in, uh, which was uh, proof of retirement uh, you know retirement proof kind of a role so you this is the biggest advantage of uh, you having your own uh, so being self employed uh, is that there is no retirement age you do what you do till when you do this mm-hmm. and and mm. most importantly i saw this as an opportunity to leave a legacy behind for her so i said okay, okay let's do this let's take the plunge while i have uh, you know all the bones and muscles working and the blood running in my veins and um so that is how this happened one fine day i just walked up to my boss and said that i think i have to just cut the umbilical cord and i have to sit back and think and reimagine my life because needs are evolving so uh, he also kindly agreed to relieve me and and uh, incidentally uh, i mean of course he and i still remain friends he was my biggest inspiration for setting up this business himself as well um why this name okay akash pari as we know it is another view of saying fairy and when we started mm, right. off we started off with gifts as a category we still do gifts grocery based gifts mm. um, handicraft based mm. gifts we still do that so why is our store name remains festive celebrations uh, on various marketplaces the company name i kept it as akash pari arts arts because uh, we cons- we go to villages artisans and get handicraft developed as per mm. a modern mm. lifestyle requirement um mm. so uh, villages of uh, artisans don't necessarily understand the kind of decor or artifacts that interest people in urban areas so we just bridge the gap and um, there are times i have traveled about two or three days to reach such locations so that is why arts art is very important you know right uh, so right. Uh, an artistic fairy so to say <laughs> uh, wonderful that that uh, born this was born out of a need to be i was just uh, noting down yeah. whatever you said here and, you know when you said that you were it comes out of a need to be wanting to uh, be close to your daughter and also at the same time leave that legacy for your future generations it must have been uh, um 
a time of uh, you know you were taking a risk you were plunging into something that was unknown uh, not not mm. too very well aware of but yet you decided to take the plunge anyway you know like how yes. they say you you just take the plunge you will grow your wings and you will eventually learn how to fly but you will not fly unless you time. jump yes yes, so, yes. So, i just told myself one thing that failure to me is not an option ab aage baat karte hain to myself jo aap bol rahe ho na jo andar se nikal ke jo awaaz aati hai so that is what that was that uh, you know i have to do this i have to make it work bilkul <laughs> bilkul that's that's an amazing commitment that you had to yourself and thank you so much for sharing this uh, mr nayar uh, over to you same question again your inspiration to start your venture take away and how did you come up with this name the story behind that well i guess i'll i'll take the long route here to answer this question um i my my parents are an inspiration in here was i um, i come from a defense background my father um uh, is late uh, he, he was in indian air force so we uh, grew up in um, um air force colonies air force quarters so i'm a i'm an air force kid so i have to speak and uh, mm-hmm. growing up at those times of course things have changed now um the two conventional paths was uh, the daughter becomes a doc- doctor and the son becomes engineer and i didn't want to take the conventional route and said main kuch bhi karu lekin fauj nahi banunga uh but i was very patriotic mujhe you know mera bharat mahan kind of thing but i i wanted to be a civilian and um, searching for the civilian lifestyle led to the hospitality industry and i chose to be in hotels uh, but never was leaving india in the horizon um, i always wanted to be in india and uh, serve india be in india be with parents and be with family kind of thing but one you know things just happen and you do not know where a one decision or a one cup of coffee will take you right so um, mm-hmm. um, when i decided to come to us for my masters um of course being the only son with a sister uh my parents were not very thrilled uh, i said mummy sirf do saal do saal bas pad kar bas yu gaya aur yu aaya i'll be back Achha. in two so the do saal happened and then you know here after two years i mean after you finish your school you get one year of opt that you know you get to uh, you get that excellent period of to work so maine kaha mummy ab ek aur saal do saal to main reh gaya ab ek saal kaam kar raha hu bas i'll just learn how things work here i'll just be back वो दो साल अभी पच्चीस साल हो गए सो वेन वेन दैट हैपन एंड रियलाइज आई विल नॉट बी गोइंग बैक इन इन अयर आई डेंट वॉन्ट टू टो द लाइन आई वॉज इन द माइनॉरिटी मैं आई वॉज दन ऑफ द वेरी फ्यू ब्राउन पीपल इन अमेरिका हु इज नॉट इन टू आई टी जो कोडिंग नहीं कर रहा हो जो जावा जो जावा नहीं कर रहा जो डॉट नेट नहीं कर रहा सो आई बी इम इंडियंस एंड दिल से ओके तो तुम क्या करते हो जावा या डॉट नेट सो आई वी लाइक फॉर हेवन सिक्स कैन एन इंडियन नॉट बी इन आई टी गाय फॉर हेवन सिक्स so i had the pressure of a mm. coming back to india and right. this was i was i was out of place so i would not be um, contributing to the conversations in projects and late nights and commitments and dot nets and java and uh, sqls uh, so mm. so then my my issue was ab main aisa kya karu jo jo mujhe acha lage and i would make my parents happy and proud ki ha bhi kuch banda kuch to kiya isne i mean he's doing he's doing something worth while um mm-hmm. but restaurants right i mean i always love to serve people and that's why i chose to be and i'm, I'm glad i chose i um even to the last you know even for have um, all those um uh needs and wants met i would still be serving people so that's my thing um but as i was in the fine, in the fine dining restaurant space you know um, um the inspiration per se i would say was came from the problem uh and the problem with my business was that 80 to 90% of my customers were regulars repeat customers so it is very difficult to get a non indian or a non brit um customer profile person to venture into an indian fine dining restaurant um there's a big barrier it's not approachable mm-hmm. okay of course in in high density towns and cities where there are a lot of uh, um diverse backgrounds and there's indians and age south asian communities uh people understand mm. but most of america still doesn't get in american indian food it's still very uh, mystic it's still very um, ethnic it's still very foreign so being in hospitality oh. i've gone to hotel management um, you know worked with the great chefs like amitabh um <laughs> it was my responsibility so as to speak to make sure that i do the education part 
has to educate the people about Indian food and and bring it to the main street. And mm-hmm. and so that, that when when problem was identified that the fine dining restaurant was not approachable for an average American. And then the solution led to the concept of inventing or trying out to to come up with a solution as to what do I do to reach the main street? What do I do mm-hmm. to make this problem and get more first timers, the impulse buying, people who just want to have lunch or dinner can venture into a space and not be intimidated. And a foreign cuisine intimidates people. Uh, uh, so, I mean, just, just for you to know, 60% of Americans okay. don't have passports, which means they don't travel oh. as much. They so, don't travel, so for, right? Right. So, so, so for them, anything is, out of the comfort. That is strange to hear. In fact, I'm sorry, I interrupted here, but that, that is a rather strange fact that you are uh, stating that that they don't travel and they don't they don't know and how, how they don't experience other cultures. That's that's a very strange fact to hear. But okay, they don't, right? Yeah, in the last 15, 20 years, with the BPOs and the IT sector booming, there are a lot of Indians and um, uh, non-Americans coming in, but. But overtly, majority of Americans still do not have passports. I mean, there's so much in America to travel, so they don't have to travel abroad. But still, contrary right. to our belief, they would not. They don't have to travel, and so they don't. So for them, America is the center of the universe, and everything revolves around America. So, so for them, what what they have is what it is. So it's people like me. And if I if I did not do this, my fear was a non-Indian would do it, and that was one of my ticking points. That. Because this is an opportunity worth, I mean, mm. just to be explored. Because uh, when you look into uh, food enterprises, there is this all set of companies um, selling burgers, fries, and cokes are hundred billion dollar enterprises. McDonald's is as as big as Tata I, I, ICL, you know, and ICL is all Indian hotels. Similar ca- market cap is McDonald's. So that shakes mm. your belief as to how could we position ourselves? How, how do we uh, set up a concept and a system where, where we can create an enterprise, create value, create wealth? And uh, yeah. so that was the whole inspiration of doing, um, getting out of the comfort zone and doing an Indian fast casual. The name, um, uh, there's a company called GoDaddy. It's one of the biggest um, uh, internet uh, registration company, right? So I had an app on my phone, uh, GoDaddy app. And every time I would walk around, think of an idea, I will register for nine ninety nine a year. So I had over twenty names in my in my in my in my, in my portfolio, and the twenty fourth name was Tikway. And one of those Eureka moments at two o'clock. Oh, this name comes in and say, okay, this is my name. Um, and so Tikway was born as a name, where uh, there's a lot of meanings in here. You know, Tikka is uh, from very Indian point of view, the Tikka. You know, the Bindi Tikka Tilak is very Indian in in the root, and um, Takeaway is a play on the word takeaway. So there's a casual right. note name. So people get, oh, that's a smart name. And it's not Taj Mahal, Noor Mahal, or Madras Cafe, or Chennai Cafe, or Bengal Cafe, which typically Indian restaurants are named. Uh, you know, somehow they don't get creative. The names of Indian restaurants are always Taj Mahal, or Mahal, or India Mahal, India Palace, and you know, things like that. So I had to bring mm. a non Indian sounding chic name, uh, which, which brings in the non Indian customer profile as well. And uh, mm. and of course there are many other like tikka is you know the food bite sized food tikka and uh, tikka yeah. the word tikka spice also is tikka so there are a lot of these name play on the words uh, tikka tikka tilak mm-hmm. and stuff one of the takeaway mm. that's where uh, takeaway mm. comes by very 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 interesting here yeah very interesting because you have uh, managed to put several meanings to this word and you've you know it's just a play made upon those words and. That's a very unique name that you have come up with. Hey, thank you so much for this story. Um, uh, Shalini, ma'am, if I may come to you. Um, you know, we have an idea and that is the start to building something that, that is tangible in nature. The implementation of this idea or building it into a reality after that start, that is the actual journey that you in, that you have all gone through. If you can just enlighten us of how did you walk that bridge from creating that idea to making it into a reality? So I think uh, I was already doing this for a company, for some other company when I decided to step out and do this for myself. So what I, I, there were still so many things I never knew I'm going to encounter when I start doing this myself. So Mm -hmm. um, 
like for example uh, the difference was that i was handling uh, a business development come product development portfolio uh, there and when i stepped out i had to handle the entire rainbow starting from getting your government registrations in place to making sure that your customers are happy and satisfied the entire thing had to be done so um, you know uh, having an idea and implementing it are two different things like you exactly mentioned so i think uh, what the, the yardstick that i stuck to till date is that we followed what our customers wanted okay. we we clung to uh, our customer feedback our our customers mm. showed us the way for our next steps because uh, you mm. see internet as a medium is extremely measurable is extremely communicative you get to know what's happening directly your product is not reaching the customer via a wholesaler or distributor and then something something like that your product you have manufactured it you have couriered it and your customer has used it and he has posted a direct feedback yeah the product is right. nice but you know if this handle could be placed slightly this side it will it will really make a difference in the use we we mm. took those feedbacks very constructively b is that we also uh, since it was uh, very measurable we took the help of analytics our analytics told us okay. what was working for us what was not working for us where we were guzzling mm. money where we could uh, where we were m- uh, milking profit and what we could mm. do to uh, maximize uh, the yield from our efforts um so uh, you know that in that sense implementation became far easier as compared to an offline business um mm. of course uh, yeah uh, there were times where we were blank uh, we were blank on various points to start with we did not know what the customer wanted because the customer himself mm. does not know what he wants so you are mm. we we we, we, we it took us a while to realize that we have to tell the customer what he has to want so once we realize these few uh, you know uh, facts of uh, the story we knew how to handhold the customer and tell him what to want what to expect from us what should we deliver and at the end of it how we can delight him every time with something mm. new so it took us about four or five such failures to understand my first yeah. raksha bandhan big festival i remember we did was a failure i fell flat on my face because i had great expectations of what the customers would buy but the customers would buy products under 500 so uh, okay. those days under 500 you could get a lot of stuff um, mm. so it made us realize the next raksha bandhan we we were able to double our volumes so likewise every festival that went by you know took the learning curve to another level so i think that is mm-hmm. uh, that is broadly that when it comes to uh, uh, you know um, uh, when it comes to um, you know implementation uh, it is the customer who we have always prioritized we still do right. and and uh, the testimony of the fact is that today amazon we work with amazon uh, we work, sell on amazon and incidentally mm. they also came down to be uh, came out to be one of the world's most customer centric companies so it it became very easy for us to align ourselves with them because uh, the thought process was similar so we were right. able to grow our businesses together like that uh, of course we right. started off times when there was no amazon in in india mm. Uh, mm. but eventually as things happened and amazon came along uh, we were able to leverage that opportunity well because the thought the core thought processes remain unchanged and consistent during the entire journey uh, mm. i hope that answers your question uh, yeah i am Sure. It, there is, there is, in fact, another question that I'd like to ask here to uh, you, Shalini, mm-hmm. ma'am. In in relation to what you just said right now, you mentioned that you 
fell flat on your face when when you were faced with a failure i'm sure that has been a challenge for you so if you can if you could uh, you know perhaps elaborate and give us something more about what has been these challenges for you you know if you could take our students through yeah, yeah, these yeah, challenges so. that you have faced mm-hmm. while growing and how did you overcome them so i think uh, challenges came from the most uh, unprecedented uh, sources okay um so uh, one of course was that not knowing exactly which way to which road to take when you start off uh, i'll give you small examples that i still remember uh, mm. when i uh, ventured out to seek my own vat number for the first time i went to the office and i applied for it and all that first foremost i was told that uh, being a woman you are a woman and asking for a vat number so uh, no. you need you need to submit a letter from your husband saying that if you fail to pay the tax your husband will i said i don't have a husband this is then it's a very difficult thing for you to get that <laughs> okay i had to i had to ask him ki abhi husband nahi hai kya shaadi karega koi jaake usse vat number lene ke liye so uh, so then he said okay usually they provide two sureties bonds from two other vat holders that time there was no gst there was vat so uh, two existing vat holders had to provide signed surety so you get a third one so and to compensate for that letter which i did eventually and that's how i got my vat number the other mm-hmm. challenge i faced was again very unthought of the fact that i was a woman and venturing out to uh, in, in, into this man man uh, man's world so to say नो गो नो लॉन्गर सो मच नाउ अभी फर्क नहीं पड़ता है अभी हम भी थोड़े थिक स्किंड हो गए हैं वी ऑल्सो डील विदम रफली एंड वी गेट अवे अराउंड सो एट दैट टाइम इवन अ प्रिंटर रिपेयर वाला वुड लुक एट मी एंड से तो आई कैन पुल अ फास्ट वन ऑन हर बिकॉज शी लुक्स लाइक यू नो एज दोज हाउस वाइफ एंड आई कैन गेट अ बेटर आउट ऑफ हर Uh, mm. so anyhow so you know that i think was uh, uh, was something that used to frustrate i wouldn't say that was a challenge uh, it, but it was a mindset that you know women and those roles uh, of course Agreed. things are better now i would say uh, okay. then i would say yeah. that you know at that time when we were starting off we were in a you know we were we were creating the road we were building our own ecosystem there was no precedence to follow in india mm-hmm. nobody was doing the e-commerce business other than india times and rediff mm-hmm. and those guys were big guys uh, they were for and a tell us tell us that around sorry i interrupted tell us that around so, what year was this in uh, i think you mentioned 2009 is, so around that time when i started yeah no 2005 okay. oh, yeah. i had four five i had started with funds and petals Uh, so even that time the situation was similar for years nothing changed because the acceptance and and penetration of e-commerce took uh, took took up pace and took up wings only after flipkart and amazon really penetrated the market uh, you know and pushed in a lot of funds right. to uh, change the consumer behavior uh, right uh, but but uh, in those days the uh, long and short of uh, see how did e- if you look at the journey of e-commerce in india how did really e-commerce uh, footprint begin in india the the economic depression of the 90s forced people settled abroad to relocate back to india the first mm-hmm. e-commerce company that was born was fabmart in bangalore that time there used to be fabmart stores and stuff like that and eventually that was bought over by aditya birla and and you know things changed then uh, then it became fab mall and it, then after that india times came up and rid of in mumbai so like there were, there were only a handful of players into e-commerce space by then okay. the banks were not ready to give you payment gateways without a security deposit if you went to mtnl and asked them for a pri line to set up a call center they would say go to some company in the us and take up a 1800 number we are pr alliance but we won't give it to you i don't know what would they make of them sitting in their office okay i had to sit mm. outside mtnl office ka jet director in the delhi's uh, head office for 45 minutes to wait to get to cm to get, to get a pr alliance connection for my office 
this is a joke now oh. it will come <laughs> अच्छी खासी नौकरी छोड़ के इसको धक्के खाने के लिए कुत्ता ने काटा है शी वुड लीव एंड शी स्ट्रगलिंग टू मेक मनी बिकॉज शी वॉन्ट्स टू डू कॉमर्स ख्याली पुलाओ तुम्हारे Uh, like mm-hmm. that they used to treat us you know that you guys have no mm-hmm. idea this is india they used to tell us <laughs> uh, <laughs> so uh, you know yeah. my challenges were you know came from sources and and places where i did not even think of it was unimaginable exactly. to think of getting loans exactly. <laughs> for an e-commerce exactly. setup exactly yeah yeah, yeah. So, okay uh, oh that's that's, that's, that's it. It. network of service providers today if i want to do some mm. photography for my products i know that there mm. are a, a host of services available there are photographers there are logistics service providers there is somebody who will give you your packing material there is somebody who will you know do, do doorstep delivery of those services to you someone will manage your listing mm. someone will manage your account all that jazz is now available we have built that mm. jazz we have written right. the rules delivery okay तो रिटर्न पिकअप होगा तो कैसे होगा वी हैव बिल्ड दैट टेक्नोलॉजी या अगर हम आपके फ्लावर्स डिलीवरी करने गए हैं एंड यू आर नॉट एट होम डज दैट काउंट फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिलीवर डज दैट काउंट फॉर प्रोडक्ट डिलीवर डू यू डिजर्व अ रिफंड फॉर दैट यू आर नॉट अवेलेबल टू रिसीव यू डोंट डिजर्व अ रिफंड फॉर दैट सो यू नो इन दैट सेंस वी हैव टू राइट द होल एसओपी एंड द होल एक्सपेक्टेशन इट वाज अ प्रोजेक्ट लेवल वर्क दैट वी वर डूइंग अलोंगसाइड right there was nobody who could supply us corrugated boxes and anybody who you went to said 10000 dabbe le lo to main bana ke dene ko taiyar hu i mean <laughs> how how do things work so uh, mm. now today people people's attitudes have changed people are willing to right. give you even 100 boxes people are willing right. to talk to you people respect you as an e-commerce seller i remember mm. walking into a uh, since we do grocery i we t- i won't take the names of the brand we walked up to a, a very big national uh, mithai brand and we said we wanted to do this madam aapke volume to aayenge nahi aap kaise sustain karoge hmm hmm then aur aaj ka din just last month we have had a meeting with the same company at their headquarters with their entire family sitting in front and asking us for business saying kar do ab hum aapko help karenge so you know it, it has come a full curve Out. since then Out. yes but it has yes. effort so um, so like you know we did not know ki agle din kahan se kaun si cheez ki shortage ya shortfall ki situation khadi ho jayegi but that mm. is what excited me But that is what was mm. challenging, and that is what was interesting. He, up, her step for problem solving, and so I kept, I kept going, and and it was like a, it was like a game, one level to another, one level to another, and it, uh-huh. it kept me. <laughs> That's right. Uh-huh. So, so I mean, keeping uh, going ahead and not giving up, uh, you know, and and yes. and you know, taking it step by step to go ahead. Yes. I'm sure the answers came to you, you know. देर से आए होंगे बट ऑल ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर्स आह आई सॉरी आई एम इंटरप्टिंग यू आई वांट टू से दिस टू ऑल ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर्स ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप इज इक्वल टू फॉलिंग ऑन योर फेस अ हंड्रेड टाइम्स गेटिंग अप द हंड्रेड फर्स्ट टाइम विद द सेम स्माइल एंड मूविंग हेड टू प्रोबेबली ट्राई समथिंग इल्स इफ यू कैन डू दैट प्लीज गेट इनटू ऑन्टरप्रेन्योरशिप बाय ऑल मींस wise words being wise. spoken here to all of our audience i hope you are making some notes as a teacher ye to main bolti rehti hu you know make sure that you are writing something make sure you are making down those notes but words of wisdom being spoken here i'm sure we are learning a lot uh, to mr roy my same question again how did you take this from the idea to making it into a reality and what kind of challenges did you have to overcome while building your brand See, as a, for entrepreneur, challenges are never uh, stopped. Even after seven years, we are in challenge. Even in first year, also we had a challenge. 
but every challenge has got a different perspective and different way it is to be now i remember i mean day one when we started me and my co-founder arun we when we started this uh, thing and uh, the telegiri 22 room property when we have there okay we wanted to so okay and we have been working with big brands and we have a uh, team we have been always but here when you do our own thing as salini says you have to go stand in the queue to get the gst license or for the vat license because there is no one to help you in when you are so first thing is you need to accept this kind of a things are going to happen with you i remember uh, uh, when initially the bookings of the hotels i have reservation email id i have uh, front of his email id but all the email ids are handled by me so when a booking comes i said my team will get back to you to showcase okay i am a ceo of a company it should not be that i am only taking the booking and selling it so my team so i'll open another email id that other email id and send the confirmation okay as per your discussion with so and so i am sending the confirmation so it's like one man army you know uh, when you mm-hmm. get into this thing so this is the challenges is always there and then i remember when we started obviously uh, for any entrepreneur funding will be an always a big challenge for everyone so when this mm-hmm. funding is there and when we think ah this particular uh, banda is always with me he will never say no to me ah, i have done so much of favor to him or i have built his career he can never say no but it is a wrong notion which he always live in and when we see in reality those people when in approach are boss hum log kar raha hai aayega kya can you join me no no sir i am secured here i am having a very good family life i am having this thing i don't want to do anything then i realize suddenly that you are all alone on the top of the tree when we think that we are within, within the crowd it is not the same thing it is that you are all alone and whomever i have favored them or we have helped them growing them in their uh, career none of them people came to me saying that oh because you are new company i don't know whether it will sustain or it will close down so obviously there is a risk of always closing down from the day one till now it will be always there it is not that ki, okay they uh, any company which will be sustaining throughout the life until unless their promoters are taking it very careful action so these are the challenges when we have to keep on in our mind that what is easy it looks like it is not the same way and we i remember the same people after two years when the company was growing they all came to me now i want to join now i want to do this thing so as a human this thing mm-hmm. generally it will be an anger or it will be a tum to join nahi kiya tha i had told you that time why you have not joined but i left all this part because i have learned the lesson from it i said okay i know this gentleman has got this is the uh, goodness in him or this is the skill set in him why not use it let's not be any emotional attachment so i oh, learned first okay. thing i learned is i have left that emotional attachment with any of my people surrounding with us i understood is everyone is working for themselves they are not working for others it is actually a very very truth i think all of us have understood when we are into climbing thing so this is the these are the challenges and challenges are always there today also we are facing lot of challenges as you know the pandemic we are um, uh, two years almost the industry has been down and you know uh, there a lot of uncertainty within us there are a lot of uh, uh, there are many hotels up for sale all these are negative part but you see the look into it last week the moment the hotel opens manali there is not even a single room available in manali so people are like you know i could see the may more coming that manali was searching for hotel beds sorry hospital beds uh, two month back today they are searching for hotel beds so this is how the situation <laughs> will get changed the the prospective of situ- uh, scenario will get changed and how you keep your calm and confidence during this crisis in your in your business in your entrepreneurship journey that is the main key thing to it right i think uh, so many points that you made here one that i really gathered was that the humility that you had to show even to those people who at times rejected you uh you know that that is something that really striked me here uh also it it is said you know that that uh, that at the bottom while you're trying 
trying to climb up uh, there is a huge crowd but as you move up the ladder this is this is typically your solo journey the, the analogy that you mentioned of being alone on top of the tree that is a solo journey that one needs to undertake and so many challenges that you must have faced along the way having overcome them also rightfully mentioned that for an entrepreneur challenges are here to stay but it's just how you look at them and how you approach them that decides on how you how you go ahead and how you how successful you become uh, thank you so much for those insights to mr nayar again the same question how did you walk the bridge from vision to realization and tell us about the challenges that you faced in a different country with the setup that you were creating to, through takeaway um right i echo echo the fact that challenges are a part of uh, a living body anyhow right i mean uh, entrepreneur or no entrepreneur if you're alive you have issues you have challenges so that's a given um but now uh, you know when it i'll i'll take it part by part the initial part was the ideas and then how do you uh, i take the idea to execution to reality um now ideas are dime a dozen and everybody walking would have ideas and uh, mm. like my my colleague earlier he mentioned that you know everyone would have an idea but it just take me one person of the person to kind of execute on it now now if you are a a, a pathologically entrepreneurial you know, twist of mind when you always think of solutions and think of uh, ways to kind of get your some venture running um the first process um is systematically vet the idea um go into all directions and vet it like a devil's advocate and kind of figure out is this idea going to hold the camp is is this idea going to hold the test of time is this idea worth the paper it's written on and then ask five questions it's called the five why why analysis ask why five times and come to the core of the issue that you're trying to address and if you think you're trying to address so that it's not a hobby it's not a fallacy it's not it's not something in your head that you're just screaming up but you have a concrete solution to a big problem that you identify so if that is the idea and it holds true after days or weeks of contemplation and 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 dissection and really you know figuring out the crux of it if it still holds true then you kind of fall in love with it it's like you have worked so hard on this problem try to figure out if this is a real problem or not you'll actually fall in love with it और एक बार अगर मोहब्बत हो जाए तो फिर क्या कहते हैं मोहब्बत करने वाले निडर हो जाते हैं है नहीं <laughs> मोहब्बत करने वाले निडर हो जाते हैं खौफ का कोई जज्बा उन्हें बांध नहीं सकता सो वंस यू गेट टू लव योर लव द प्रॉब्लम यूर सॉल्विंग देन चैलेंजेस तो यार ऐसी है मतलब आते रहेंगे जाते रहेंगे राइट सो सो वंस यू गॉट टू दैट स्टेज is when you kind of see what's happening and and those challenges uh will not hold much of a issue because you have made the resolve you know in your deep in your heart that i have gone through these issues in my head i've gone through the processes i know that there would be issues okay but if this is the issue i'll tackle this okay so that's where that concept of of uh, idea to execution kind of comes in personally mm. speaking personally speaking i yes i was in a different country and in here um unlike other some other countries the work visas are an issue so i came in a student visa and i had a work visa called h1 and uh, i i just jumped into you know with partnerships and starting businesses and stuff like that and i had this h1 visa so when i wanted to go solo with takeaway with no other partners mm -hmm. no uh, co-founders per se um that was the biggest issue the visa issue could i be would i would it work uh now so so only when you kind of get to a spot you cannot foresee every challenge you cannot foresee every problem that's going to that you're going to encounter when you get to it you kind of take a deep breath and see okay fine is this problem solvable is it worth it should i fight right. it and you pick your right. battles and and get in right. how do you overcome the problems you will not overcome all problems you will not a lot of problems will overcome you right overpower you now ab ye dekhna hai ki jab wo overpower ho rahe hain to ab zinda rahe be alive theek hai so that so that when you kind of have have survived the the problem that overcome came you then you breathe hard take a breath go ahead and and fight another battle so in my case mm -hmm. the visa was issue i went to a lawyer and kind of figured it out and then of course like amitabh said funding was issue you know, had to raise a lot of funds uh, had to put everything that mm -hmm. we had i had on the line 
uh, that had to be put on and then so uh, but then once you get on with it wo ek aur kehta na wo what was that agar tum kisi ko sare dil se chaaho to sari kainat use tumhare piche lag jati hai aur the dialogue from om shanti om yes agar kisi cheez ko apne pure dil se chaaho to puri kainat usse tumse milane ki something mein lag jati hai i am forgetting koshish mein lag jati hai yes so the things will happen then tab to fir ho hi jata hai um and then so so those are those those uh, um so so how to overcome these issues is to keep yourself in a good head space ki aapka head jo hai sahi disha mein ho so that you are centered and you know ki bhai this is where i'm going and i will go there no matter what theek hai because as long as i am on i got to do this and agar wo humne resolve bana liya so then then challenges are a matter of theek hai fine another hurdle okay i go to that so us us hisab se when you position that then you find so the biggest solution in here uh, is like i said ki badon ki dua bahut baterna aur apno ka pyar bahut rakhna because yahi cheeze kaam aayengi when wo ped pe akele baithe ho to apne hi pyar karenge theek hai aur jo ped pe akele baithe ho aur tehni alag hai girne wale ho to badon ki dua kaam aayegi ki bhai gire to bhi beta tum haddi ne tote तो जब जब हो सके एज ऑन गोन डेली बेसिस वीकेंड में जहां जहां बड़े मिले उनसे दुआ लेते रहो इतना रहो जैसे बैंक बैंक की कीप ठीक है और जहां जहां अपने मिले उनको उनको बस प्यार देते रहो क्योंकि उनसे प्यार वापस मिल लेना तुम जरूरत पड़ेगी जब तुम अकेले हो पेड़ पे तो देते रहो प्यार सो गिव प्यार गिव प्यार टेक दुआ टेक दुआ ओके सो दैट्स वन मेजर इक्वेशन दैट यू कीप वर्किंग ऑन एंड बाकी चैलेंजेस तो ये दुआ और प्यार करा ही देगा तो उनका उनका दे सपोर्ट that mera dua hai mera beta tu kar le beta main hu tere sath to wo dua will give you the solution to overcome the problem mm-hmm. there is no there is no answer ki ha ye cut copy paste kar le google ne bata diya google nahi batayega wo dua batayegi aur tum tum hi karoge so you're going to figure it out mm-hmm. but keep the dua and the mm-hmm. pyar and uh, and then and and that's on and keep keep going i guess it's i think it's the energy that you put out you know you you've uh, spoken this uh, on on the website of takeaway when i was going through it and it just resonated so much you know, the, the energy that you put out comes back to you uh, multifold and million times over so give out that happy energy give out that happy uh, vibe and uh, and like you rightly said dua and pyar batte raho and this is where you would go ahead uh i i would also want you to touch upon you have spoken about it a bit when you started off with this answer but if you can help our students you know so many of them come up with uh, wanting to become entrepreneurs so many of them want to do something on their own how does one go about to identify uh, a business that brings sustainability that is sustainable in the long uh, long run how does one go about with it from a student point of view how what can you guide us with so that's a fabulous question that's actually a fantastic question um, i would take this okay. question in a different uh, different angle but i'll get to the crux of the answer so uh, identifying a business in terms of long term sustainability i would catch the the horn and say let me figure out a problem which is deep rooted which has a, a big enough problem which would take maybe 15 20 30 years to solve and you cannot solve it agar aisa problem mila kisi bhi situation mein ho agar hospitality ho ya food mein ho ya tech mein ho ya e-commerce mein ho any box of life if you have identified a problem that you personally are facing and you don't see a solution in the horizon that's the problem mm-hmm. that is worth working on and that's the problem that will lead to a business which could be monetized with with time um and that mm-hmm. will become a sustainable business when your sustainability in terms of a, a time limit in here is it 5 10 15 20 the time horizons are changing with time right so pehle to 15 20 saal ki company khadi karte the aaj kal to 6 6 mahine mein company badal jati hai so so in yeah. terms of uh, so so that sustainability and long term sustainability depends on the problem you're solving and and uh, and mm-hmm. but then and this is the premise agar you are a kabaddi player you will not go and play in a cricket field right so so typically you will see the problems in your in your uh, uh, field of strength 
So if you are in right. say, housekeeping, for example, or you're in a front office, uh, for example, and you want to build a career in F&B, for example, you would find the problems in that particular field. And there will be many problems that you might face, but not all problems are worth solving, number one. And not all problems are worth building a business on. अगर वो ऑन्टरप्रिनरशिप की बात है जहां पे आप अंतर प्रेरणा आपकी बात आती है तो प्रेरणा तो आती रहेगी एंड एंड योर चैलेंज इज टू वेट दो प्रेरणा टू फाइट दो प्रेरणा एज दो देव योर एनिमी ऐसे लड़ो कि तुम हो ही नहीं एंड देन वो प्रेरणा अगर फिर भी बोलते कि मैं हूं एंड आई एग्जिस्ट एंड आई एम देयर फॉर लॉन्ग टाइम दैट द प्रेरणा दैट यू वॉन्ट हग मैरी एंड से चलो अगले बीस साल तुम्हारे साथ So, so the problem oh. identification and vetting out the problem is the is the first and foremost and the most important part. If it was not done, then uh, you won't be able to find a solution on this. And and solution here is for monetization and making a business, which means it has to be economically viable, doesn't even stand the stand the ground. Hmm. Well, interesting perspectives here. I'm I'm certain and I'm hoping definitely that our students are learning a lot from what is being shared by our speakers. I would like to uh, get uh, Mr. Roy's perspective yeah. on the, another question that I have. Um, so, uh, Mr. Roy, do tell us uh, what, according to you, are the absolute must-have skills. that one needs to have while starting off on a new venture see uh, it is not i, I won't say uh, i just rephrase it it is not the skill i want to say i want to say certain attributes and certain mindset uh, you so, must uh, what the students can have or what the entrepreneur can have while you know uh, planning their business there will be on 10 11 points i'm just you know in a bullet ways i'm just telling the first and foremost what you should have it is the guts and the confidence there has to be mm. guts to to jump on it and there should be a confidence to build on that part so that is the four and foremost for any entrepreneur or would be entrepreneur who is planning to do that second thing is very important is the discipline factor so discipline is something mm. you know when you are on your own boss generally what happen is okay you are working somewhere your bosses or your uh, mentor or your leader will be giving you timing you come this time you do this time to do the, so when you are on your own it is mainly how you are disciplined and how you are managing because your uh, your action is actually been prevailed by entire team so it is very important for an entrepreneur to be disciplined to maintain the timing so i remember when i left my resting and started doing i said no if the timing is 9 o'clock i start i i should start at 9 o'clock and i should maintain that so that is very important for any would be entrepreneur who is looking into it third thing is right attitude and right time a person definitely should have the right attitude many times it has happened that i started once after just passing of my college i thought okay let me and it because i did not have that attitude at that time again after four years i tried and it failed because that was not a proper timing was not there so this we we ourselves have to really understand what is the right attitude when is the right uh, timing for the for jumping into an entrepreneurship journey and as uh, i have a co-founder and uh, gopi and uh, salini do not have choose your partner very correctly sometime what happened you know in the college uh, we are very good friend pali pali uh, let's start a business we can do a business business is not a friendship and friendship is not a business so we need to segregate this part a lot we need to select a proper partner while you are doing it a partner why you need a partner i always say you must have a partner when you are doing it it's like something like a marriage you you need a partner uh, to sail through you there will be lot of time which are demoralizing time there is a aloneness is there when you are an entrepreneur you are absolutely alone in the journey so when a partner is there at least you share with each other and you hold hand during the difficult time a right partner can actually make you and a wrong partner can break you it can it can really damage your business so be very very wiseful when selecting your partner in doing an entrepreneurship journey then set them very attainable 
Yes, ma'am. Please carry on, Mr. Roy. Yeah. Go ahead. So, uh, set a very attainable goals. Your goal should be very, very smart goal. It has to. I know all everybody knows the smart goal, specific, that measurable, attainable, uh, mm -hmm. reliable, and time bound. So, very. Very set a very smart goal. Don't say that okay, I want to make a, a, a one crore business in one month time, or I want to do fifty uh, hotels or hundred uh, restaurant chain. Be very very attainable. What is your strength? Identify that, and as per that, you set your goals and flash your goal always. If my goal is that you no, know, we we have been running it that by 2020 we should have 2020 rooms. And this we set in 2017, and we were been actually flashing it every month. We were reminding ourselves that this is our goal, this is our goal, and we were driving towards this. We may have got 2,000 rooms provided this pandemic has not hit us in 2020. Otherwise, our target was that 2020 in December we would have 2,000 rooms by in our portfolio. So set a very attainable goal. Keep flashing the goals in your mind, and I am sure you will be able to achieve towards that. Then, when we do an entrepreneurship journey, so many times it happens that I want to make money. Yes, money is very important. But when we start focusing on making money, we leave the product and we leave the services. We don't focus on that. What we actually wanted to do, we we leave that. Okay, we I suppose example I wanted to showcase in your Indian hospitality. I don't focus on my product. I don't focus on my. Quality of the services, and I am looking, looking. Okay, add hotels, add this thing. It is not going to because you can build, but if there will not be the base, will be very, very uh, weak. So please set a very focus on your product and services, and please ensure that it is you need your you have to differentiate your business. As you all say that there we wanted to know particularly we set it that it has to be tied to tie three cities, smaller hotels. So I have set a proper USP. For our brand, brand. Similarly, I know that Salini has also created his USP. Tikkaway has also created his USP. So any business which is been climbing has to have a USP and a growth factor and a and uniqueness in the whole thing. Then the uh, the, uh, the eighth point is that money management. You know, when we do this thing, money will be always for any entrepreneur or business. Money will be a challenging proposition. Throughout our entrepreneurship life, it is never that key. None, whether it's a whether it's an Amazon or a Flipkart or any business you say. So it is a big business or a small business. Money planning and money management has to be done in very very crucial way. But when we do this, please always remember: do invest in good and quality people, quality products. invest in technology technology is the in thing and without your technology if you feel that i am hanuman i can kiske anda parbat utha ke leke jayenge it is not possible you need to trust your technology and never ever think twice also to invest on your people on your product and on the technology in this current scenario today marketing is another one area we always have to look into it that it has to be right strategy there are today we have moved, moved to digital all this tv radio everything is over news media is over it is all through digital marketing so we have to identify it and we have to generate our skills throughout right. that that we can do a right marketing strategy for our product and the this thing and another the the 10th point is uh, build a team it is And calculate your dream and your wishes down the line. Entrepreneur doesn't mean that morning from nine o'clock till night twelve o'clock you will be slogging and you will be only doing it. You need to calculate your dream and your wishes to the people, and you have to basically make a clone of your people. Whatever your thought process is there, the thought process should be calculate down the line, and the even the darwan and the doorman also should see that if I say that okay, I want to give an Indian hospitality. Or Tikka Bay said, "I want to give a Indian food to the customer." Or Salini says, "I want to build the customer services." So everybody has to align. So alignment of the team, build the team, build the high performance team during when you are in the journey. And the last and foremost, never quit. Never, never quit because there will be many instances will come that, "Arey, isse acha to job hai, isse acha to job hai," 
and one more thing is that you know generally when in a in a entrepreneurship journey even sometime your family member also won't support family member also till are yaar you are doing a fantastic job why you are uh, slogging your butt out here you should have been there and you should do this so there will be a time like this but there will be many time it will like oh, this this job is giving me more rewarding more financial benefits maybe it will be there but never quit because as you said salini also said that the uh, 100 times you will fall but you have to rise and you have to move ahead these are the 10 11 points which i feel the student must know must make a point when they are doing a venture and these are all very 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 uh, practical point which i say has to be implemented when you go for a entrepreneur journey wonderful i think so many parts that you have covered in this answer mr roy that uh, you know i have been noting down all of the points that you have mentioned these could these could be actually made into a guideline for uh, students of what they could remember while they step on to their entrepreneurship journey so this is uh, i mean really really wonderful this applies to all of us you know these these points are like principles of uh, entrepreneurship i would say thank you thank you so much for this insight uh, to shalini ma'am i want to uh, put forth my next question to you uh, you see building your network is is extremely crucial for any business to thrive uh, what guidelines what tips could you give to a student of where they could start to build such kind of a network so so the first thing i would say is start early um don't wait till you know you reach a certain designation or a certain position to start make networking the core of your career you know networking eventually leads you to an unmatchable pool of information and ideas and those will fuel your long term growth before you get into networking i have a few things to say make yourself worthy of trust go slow with relationships allow them to simmer on low flame stirring occasionally speed thrills but kills hands that hold you define how far you will go opening new opportunities and job leads will happen from these networkings it has happened with me so i'm 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 sharing the real time experience the next thing i would say is make real connections with the spirit of networking don't become a monkey ki main uska aise fayda utha lu usko aise use kar lu i will ride on his back and reach so and so place no be the one to take others along with you never use people create the right causes to get to the right effect and now coming to the real part of networking coming from the times where we are coming we had no opportunities like social media and linkedin and so on and so forth to build our network so all we could used to do is is to call on people go meet them make connections attend get togethers or conferences to meet people etc but today i think as students who are venturing out into the outside world first thing have your linkedin account have clarity on where you want to go tell the world that I, this is what i am seeking so that the right people make connections with you and vice versa you i mean i don't need to introduce you guys uh, to the social media it's the other way around we can learn a lot from you there is an instagram available today there is a twitter available there is a technology based support for networking available on all fronts whether it's facebook or whether it's professional groups or whether it's groups for uh, aimed at a certain uh, cause uh, you have the right Uh, amount of support available uh, they, you know so please go out and use technology but at the same time remain humanistic with that uh, let's keep our expectations real while we are networking as well uh, so you know uh, i would say my my advice to you guys now is that who do i need to network with the big question is that when i'm out of my college i have so much on me i have to build a career i have to uh, you know look for a job i have to meet people there are friends there is family who all do i take along i would say the answer is everyone there are networks that we need to build with 
co-workers eventually in whatever work sphere you get into with customers with family with friends with professors with your people who have you know handheld you to come here so far professional in your field acquaintances people who you might meet at a spa or a gym or something like that so in a nutshell the answer is that uh, you know people today network when they need something from the other person and for me that's the that's wrong simple there is no middle way that's wrong you can go to someone and ask for help when you are connected with him i am saying make those connections and make them real call them once in a while and say i just called to ask how you are feeling how you are doing because however big or small or an entrepreneur or an employee or or uh, even if i am a jeff bezos or an elon musk waiting to ride my trip to the space to the end the next few days at the end of the day i am a human being as long as i remain humanistic and embody those human values i will never need to chase people i will be a magnet that is the core principle of networking become the magnet that attracts become the magnet that that allows people to feel comfortable around you because as you grow in your respective roles wherever you are you will realize ki aapka kaam to 10% reh jayega aapka kaam to aapko 10% hi chalayega aage agar aap jaoge to aap apne people skills ki wajah se jaoge aur agar aap nahi jaoge to bhi apne people skills ki wajah se nahi jaoge if you cannot manage people you may be the best chef or the best housekeeper or the best restaurant manager it's worth nothing so right so networking is not just about knowing people or making friends with them it's about adding value to that network what do you what can you do to add value back to them i would like to stop mm-hmm. here on this thank you thank you thank you so much so many parts again that you have uh, covered i would in fact uh, like to continue with this uh, follow up question for you uh, shalini ma'am uh, since you have been in this e-commerce uh, uh, business for so many years now um, how do you believe now, we are all you know students from hospitality background in hospitality industry how does e-commerce connect to hospitality how does it benefit our students what what can you say about this so you know um, you know today the, the digital is the future of the world and digital is 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 everywhere you know there are no marks for getting this right but uh, the thing is that e-commerce is a medium like amitav said print tv and radio are history okay now the medium on which information and internet of things as they say iot rides is e-commerce today mm. if you want aata it's coming via e-commerce if you want uh, to recharge your phone a digital product it is coming via e-commerce route so that in a nutshell b2b and b2c have started dissolving there are no wholesalers distributors and then dukan walas and then consumer that that whole network is dissolving it has become d2c i manufacture cleaning agents for a home and i will sell them to my consumer directly it's very very simple like that now now to to be able to reach out to your customers it's far more easier and at the same time the speed of work has also gone up customers expectations have gone up they want to be able to order products from you directly they want to be able to give you feedback they want to be able to involved in the process of conceptualizing the product design mm-hmm. they want to be uh, there, there is so much involvement of the end consumer that if you don't ride that wave your product will be left sitting on the shelves of stores modern retailers hypermarkets malls are all history in fact now what is riding is customizable products 
can you customize my blend of tea as per my taste and give it to me written shalini's tea in one home and it's not very far away one year ma'am one in one home you will have five packs of tea shalini's tea mom's tea dad's tea daddy's tea everybody drinks their own tea tea and that is the segment that is where e-commerce can help it can help you create an experience it can help you reach millions of consumers overnight at the click of a button in the most cost effective way it can help mm. you uh, market your products easily without the fuss of have and losing time with so much of a distribution process and most importantly you may be sitting in a small place like uh, coimbatore i'm not saying it's a small place but i'm saying in a, in a, in a tier 2 or a tier 3 city for example you may be sitting in a in a in, a, in some small uh, little 2 uh, km uh, town for example and be manufacturing products that give you access and reach all over india overnight seamlessly so mm -hmm. imagine having a small shop in one small corner or big big corner of india and selling to localized consumers vis-a-vis -vis having a, a a cloud kitchen or a or a shop on the cloud for that matter having a duck kitchen let's say okay and and selling to the whole country and now the next wave is global Right. selling products right. to people like uh, people in the us or canada or wherever you have uh, your relevant customers so mm -hmm. uh, it gives you an access an easier speedier faster access to your produce to what you intend to serve to your consumers and that is the connect between every business and e-commerce not just hospitality hospitality Mm. For example, for Amitabha's business to be able to sell rooms, he has to be with aggregators. Uh, you know, or for that matter, for a restaurant business, you have to have a Swiggy, a Mato, and so on and so forth. Your own website to to be able to penetrate. Right. So that, that that is the connect that I see. That is very e-commerce. Yeah, I'm sure that is where this will benefit all of our students also to to really think of those ways of how they can penetrate the market. through the use of e-commerce as a platform which is which is how we are going ahead with and yes. i believe uh, uh, with the pandemic things have changed a lot and and it has you know taken a turn it has to... accelerated by 10 years easily absolutely absolutely uh, thank you uh, ma'am this is where i'd i'd like to ask uh, mr nair our uh, next question is uh, you have also Uh, seen the effects of uh, the pandemic and perhaps your business has seen the effects of the pandemic as well how during this phase were you able to stay connected to the people to all of your stakeholders for that matter how did you manage to do that um well for the uh, first few days or a couple of weeks uh, there was so much uncertainty nobody knew what was happening and so uh the first wave hit the uh, us bad actually right so there were a uh, uh, lot of lot of uncertainty lot of fear and with with all those political voices around it was it was really uh, too much noise uh so after uh, after climbing down with the family for a few days enjoyed the family time um i kind of stored everything that we had to and we stayed in, indoors many um uh, once we realized that there, there's no end in sight and there's no there's, there's there's so much uncertainty as to when it would open up um i made went to the basics a scheduling and um in in when i was a student and i guess in the first few years of my career as well i i used to make a lot of checklists i used to have my to do lists a um, mm -hmm. lot of post it notes with to do lists and on my phone to do list and and i realized over time that those lists would actually not get done not executed and in one of those uh talks i guess it was um elon musk or someone on those caliber they said if you put it on schedule it will get done uh to do list don't work and um, uh that's when the scheduling thing happened so i scheduled uh everything that i had to do from from 6 in the morning till till 11 in the night and scheduled all those stakeholders customers checklists emails whatever i had to do uh put them on the schedule on a weekdays and weekend basis mornings and afternoon basis and and check them off 
and uh, and and uh, of course didn't get I'm sorry I'm of- interrupting you here I'm so sorry I'm interrupting what did you use to put them on the schedule tell is was that an app that you use was there um, a, a notepad you wrote things in what did you use to put put the schedule down well there there are many apps the current app that i use is a, is an app called asana a s a n a um where where i mean all i mean I, i have that with the family as well so if i miss something um, my my daughter would know that dad missed something so she can tell me that dad you did you do this so so the accountability and putting on schedule and uh, opening up transparency telling them the listen this is what i'm supposed to be doing uh, put us all on the same page but yeah uh, right. earlier it used to be in the google calendars uh, but now mm-hmm. there's so many apps um i use apple okay. asana um so yeah so scheduling make what gets on schedule gets done period um and so that's a long 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 story short uh, that that's how the whole connectivity happened and kept in touch uh, and and we have good strong bond with our classmates so we actually grew much stronger uh, the batch of 95 uh, we are so much closer so much more uh, into each others and you know we love each other much more than i thought we would in you know after all these years and uh, so a lot of good with this too and so um and amitabh right there is one of the best the biggest and the most efficient organizers i've seen um he somehow gets time for all the facebook posts all the insta posts all the news everything that goes on he has time for all that i don't know how he does it he uh, he has 48 hours in a day i guess but <laughs> but but he is he's one of my heroes in how how he gets uh, his his things done wonderful wonderful i mean i i i did realize he's been so methodical in, in even in the answers that he has given so it it isn't a surprise when you are saying that uh, he is considered to be one of the best organizers of your batch i am certain there are a lot of batch mates from your batch in fact who are right now logged in onto this webinar and who are hearing you talk and i'm sure they are also perhaps nodding their heads and enjoying watching you have this conversation so just an added point there uh thank you for your answer mr roy i'll come to you next i wanted to ask if our students wish to do any kind of specialization courses that will help them to upskill or create cross skills what sort of courses would you recommend uh priti uh, right now uh, looking at the situation okay i think we are opening up sl- uh, slowly i don't know whether uh, physical classes how long it will take but as uh, gopi says that i have 48 hours or so nothing like that i have also 24 hours we really have to plan things accordingly you know robin sharma says that 5 am club so that is a very important area which is you know that uh, you basically steal that one hour time for yourself to do and plan things that is you know getting up early that 5 o'clock and all this now uh, for the students this is my sincere advice that today first thing is what we should do is that there are a lot of crash courses of two month three months online available everybody should do a course on social marketing on digital marketing which i feel whoever wants to do entrepreneur whether you are becoming entrepreneur or becoming a single uh, single preneur or you want to become a celebrity chef you have to sell yourself you need to make yourself a brand you as a brand you as a personality so if you are doing that you will be knowing it today it all presence is coming through insta and through facebook there are reels there there are reels there are short videos now how you promote yourself you make your anybody today i can see the boxer i can see the, the sportsman i can see the 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 health guy I'm sorry did we just lose connection there I am unable to hear Mr Roy Can Asman please come in Ah uh, yes I'm I guess we've lost connection with him Okay okay Perhaps perhaps in the meanwhile if you'd like to take another question yes i think so perhaps uh, we'll just wait uh, till mr roy joins in in the in the, in the meantime in fact uh, if if i may go back to uh, shalini ma'am then 
and uh, ask you uh, a question here. Uh, this, in fact, will be something that I would like all three of you to answer. But we begin with you, ma'am. So it is said that uh, you know you begin how you begin your day determines how you end it. So what is it that you do to start your day like a boss? Uh, okay, for me, let's understand what is a boss. What does it mean to be a boss? Uh, well, from the outside, if you look at it, it means somebody who is standing at the head of uh, the entire process or whatever you're trying to do. So mm -hmm. in that sense, uh, you can look at it in two ways. One is that the person is a boss, absolutely someone in charge. But for me, it's just the other way around. I am dependent on the entire tree down below to be able to work. I am a boss only if I have subordinates. Otherwise, it's nothing. So, mm. uh, unfortunately or fortunately, I don't begin my day like a boss. I don't like to begin it like a boss. Uh, till 10 a.m., I'm a mommy, I'm a homemaker, I'm, I'm like any one of us. I cook myself, I don't have a battery of servants. I'm a hands-on woman. However, at the end of the day for me, being a boss is that I don't get a call, frantic call saying, ma'am, this problem is repeatedly. Same problem should not occur. You have a problem? Mm -hmm. Let's talk about it. If I don't get a call, is when I feel it's the best day of my life. Because it's mm -hmm. not about how the show runs when I'm present. It's how, it's about how the show runs when in my absence. So mm. I feel happy that my staff and people are empowered to do the job. They have the resources to finish their work. They have the ability to do their work and the inclination to do it without being uh, poked with a prong. No. So for me, being okay. a boss is about being us being at service to them. So. If they need me, I better be available. Mm. So post 10 o'clock, I answer all my calls diligently. I don't postpone my problems. And if between a business opportunity and a staff call, my staff will always get a priority. Okay. So that is what it means for me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Mr. Nair, same question question to you till, till we have Mr. Roy joining back. I think we are still waiting for uh, the video to connect properly. Uh, so till Tiddy joins back, Mr. Nair, the same question comes to you. How do you start your day like a boss? Funny enough that uh, we classmates think alike. So I, I, in, in my response, I also thought I should uh, address uh, what's the boss? You know, wh how you let's let's talk about the boss in here. And mm -hmm. uh, my take is a little different from the homemaker and the mother there, um, um, which is good in a way, I guess. So I, I, I interpret that as uh, actually uh, in control of my own senses, if in control mm -hmm. of my own, on my own responses, in control of my being controlled, essentially. Um, and having, I mean, being the boss of your own, this guy, right? The guy you see in the mirror. And typically, uh, we are not. Um, and uh, so, uh, so I what what I do typically is is uh, again funny enough. Uh, this is really it's, it's amazing that we we think so much alike. So uh, Robin Sharma, who actually is a I look like him apparently. Um, um, he he has this five 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 a.m. club and stuff. I I don't do five five o'clock, but I do get up at five thirty. And um, uh, typically there's a snooze time. I get lazy four five minutes, but before five five thirty five I'm up. And I do, uh, I have a few routines and um, mm -hmm. I believe the routines uh, get you the, the mental strength and the stability and the, and the response feature that your system can kind of get to rather than react. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you have routines, then you, um, then you don't react as much, you respond. If you don't mm -hmm. have routines, you'll probably react more than you respond. So my, right. my, 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 my agenda is always to respond, um, not react. Um, mm -hmm. Though I'm not hundred uh, percent ever successful in that but um, if, if I get more checks more responses then I have a better day um, my routine would include some stretches and um, I do diligently some breathing exercises and I do some yoga and a 20 20 minute 25 minutes uh, a meditation uh, mm -hmm. and and then the routine starts and the whole day starts and 
and then the bossness and the servant service and all that comes in play but but that's how my my one and a half two hours in the beginning great great so mr roy thank you again for joining yeah. and i think we had a little bit of connectivity issues there if you yes, don't mind if you, can, if you can take this question also and uh, let's have you answer this and then we can go back to what you were answering previously yeah no this is the question is what actually how do i start my day how do you start your day like a boss no i don't start i don't consider myself as a boss uh, that is one i am always a part of the team and uh, i have delegated my work actually if you look into it as a uh, gopi says like 5:30 yes i also do wake up at 5:30 i have my own routine of similar set pattern of yoga last one and a half years almost two years i have been doing extensively yoga and meditation so that is keeping me calm and uh, composed during this pandemic time so i keep doing that yes of course uh, in generally when uh, uh, normal before the pandemic i was a uh, uh, i am a like uh, my traveling is to be almost like 3 to 4 days in a week because i have hotels across uh, uh, many cities in uh, town and uh, generally my phone will not ring much that is what i initially it used to be i have made it in such a manner that it doesn't ring too much and i give i take it as a proud that i keep the phone in any meeting i say i have not put it off and my delegation of work is as such that it will not ring when i want to be connected i will get connected until unless there is a fire nobody will be calling me so this mm-hmm. that delegation i think for every entrepreneur is very important Mm-hmm. and uh, yes it's not that i am not connected with the team i have been connected i have various you know work whatsapp group for each hotel for every uh, all that part is all there i have been taking feedback everything i know what is happening in the hotel but my phone will not ring so this is the kind of a uh, delegation generally uh, i should feel that a person should do it that it's not that you have put this thing and you are bugged up and when i see now as gopi correctly says that yes you have got i uh, have 48 hours i don't say it's in 24 hours uh, in fact uh, i have, we have opened myself and gopi have opened one more company a new company which we are launching very shortly on uh, um, organic food and wow. uh, getting it time for that particular thing also to be launched now and in fact uh, next week we will be launching it uh, it is all through organic food and into retails as uh, a completely different uh, business so finding time is completely up to you apart from that i have also last 4 uh, 5 months i have been mentoring one uh, it company which is a completely different field altogether and my wife says how you are managing i don't know because it's a new company and that's a startup company it's my friend's one and i have been mentoring that and last 3 months i am very busy with that you know uh, because it's a, from the scratch but now the value addition has been done in such a manner the time management is done in such a manner that i am able to do it and this is what been advised to everybody the people have to plan their things and uh, uh, do it properly great that is that is and uh, regarding to my other question which i got disconnected i just yes. wanted to say that uh, yes. to all the uh, students who are listening to us that uh, you have uh, that the skill set which we have to develop is one is that you can do lot of crash courses are available through for 3 months and 4 months 6 months uh, for this kind of uh, social media certification digital marketing and all these things it is very important you can do it make yourself as a brand whether as a chef as a housekeeper whether as an interior designer whether is a as a um, as a manager you please make yourself as a brand that yes you have been working make your followers make your give back to the society through your social media marketing that is very important how you do it second thing i would like to say that for any entrepreneur as i told you there is no as such any rules or regulation gain some experience and then jump for it and meantime there are many courses from i am i am sir there which are called executive uh, link uh, executive management programs which right. uh, students can do it uh during the course of uh, the hotel management they can do it or they been even after they are working they can do that these are all the basic management thing which they will learn and they will help them there grow their uh, career path okay okay thank you thank you so much for that uh well 
we are almost uh, coming to the close of this webinar. We are we have uh, comfortably overshot our time, but there has been so much that you have shared that I just think the time limits did not make any sense here because so many stories that you had to share. If it was up to me, we would have continued for so much more longer. We, I do have one more question to all three of you, and if I may ask uh, uh, Shalini ma'am to uh, please begin here. What advice can you give to our young wannabe entrepreneurs? Oh. So um, I want to ask this question to everyone. Why is this pandemic being labeled as difficult? Why are we saying they're going through difficult times? Is the real reason that 30% of the people, 40% of the people have lost jobs? No, that's not the real reason. All of us are still managing food on the table. We're still surviving. We're still living. OK, yes, some people have lost family members and that is rather grave. Uh, the real reason why we find this pandemic difficult is because it has ushered in change. Change is difficult. It's very easy to go with what you're habituated to, but if you have to change your ways, life becomes difficult. So therefore, this is the time the world order is changing. The way the business happens is changing. The way we live is changing. The way we work is changing. The way we buy is evolving. This is a never before opportunity. History is being created here. When five years down, when you will look back, you will see, oh, we could, we, why couldn't we do this pre-COVID? Why did COVID have to happen to make us do this so differently? So in words of Sir Winston Churchill, Never waste a crisis. This is seize this opportunity. So, so what if the most obvious option of hotels is not looking so bright for everyone yet? Someone loss is always someone's gain. It is entirely mm. in our own hands to turn this poison into medicine. This crisis will create more entrepreneurs than any other period. I can assure you. The other advice I want to give you guys is never be scared to stand alone. Have the courage to your conviction and fight your way through. And don't look for a for a size of the audience. Even one is a number. Mm. Ask your audience to buy one or two things. Either you will win or you will learn. Both ways you will stand to gain. Right. My third advice to you is be flexible. Be open to flowing like water. Mm. The fourth advice, which has been, I think, said so many times between Gopi and Amitava is cling to discipline. Because discipline will either make you or break you eventually. My fifth advice to you is keep yourself in a high life state, no matter what. A good life is not a byproduct of lack of problems. It is a result of your ability to choose to see rainbows despite the muddy rainwater you may be standing in. And lastly, most importantly, as my mentor, Dr. Daisaku Ikeda puts it, work enough for three people. Means in every one day, do so much work that three people would do. Never complain. Complaints erase fortunes. Smile. However, however difficult the situation may be, with a smile you can kill the most difficult situation and walk out of it and turn it in your favor. Mm. That's all I'd like to say. Thank Wonderful. you. Again, words of wisdom here. Thank you so much, Mr. Nair. Coming to you, what do you have to say to our young entrepreneurs today? Oh, there are many, but I'll, I'll stick to a few. <laughs> um, one is my favorite uh, uh, Sanskrit shloka. Um, uh, I'll translate, but uh, the the second part uh, is the is nahi suptasya singhasya pravishanti mukhe murgaha. What that means is a uh, uh, lion is the king of the jungle, the strongest and can hunt down any any prey. But even though the lion is the king of the jungle, a sleeping lion doesn't get the prey. 
the rabbit mm-hmm. or the deer won't come to him and say hey lion you're the most powerful you're the most deserving why don't you eat me for lunch right so mm-hmm. so nahi suptasya singhasya a sleeping lion provision ti mukhe murga so the, the the prey will not come to the sleeping lion's mouth to eat the lion has to go hunt out from the deer run faster run smarter uh, plan strategically and then go conquer so nothing comes easy hard work is mm-hmm. is out there however whatever anyone says that you don't need to work hard that's a myth that's a fallacy don't believe that working hard always work add smartness to it so work smart but don't stop working hard period oh, um the right. num- number 2 is never ever 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 be scared to fail i would say go fail now go go break your bone go break i mean your your parents are young now right so you're just in college so this is the time when you can go take a risk you can just can go out and venture out your stuff but ask nikalo apni your parents are still young they can still support you okay now if you do that when at my age and you have two three generations to kind of look at you know both generations to look at and see okay fine i have i have my parents to take care of and my kids are depending on me kind of situation so that becomes more and more difficult so if you want to take risk don't shy away from it take it sooner sooner the better and mm-hmm. unless you decide that you have failed you do not fail you only learn right so keep failing from right. other point of view but in your eyes you're learning so keep learning keep learning and and then at one time you and you all need all you need is one success nobody cares for failures nobody you can count any of these entrepreneurs we have we have spoken about and the ones we have not spoken about none of them is at one strike wonder they all have failed they tried numerous times they failed nobody remembers their failures they remember their successes jeff bezos says that he has made billions and billions of dollars of failures but you have his prime and you have his aws you know successful stuff right milon musk has failed numerous times everyone has failed so many times so it just takes mm-hmm. one success okay so so go and that keep a journal make notes write write what your ideas that are coming to you write what you learned write the mistakes that you made so that the next mm-hmm. time this comes around you have something to fall back upon don't think that your brain will carry all that stuff it won't So take a journal, write a journal, make notes of what you thought, what you did, and what you did, and what you said to someone else. So that so those journals will always come back to help you. And and one fine day, if you are a successful entrepreneur, you want to write a book, that journal will be the book already for you there, right? So so just take some editing, and then you have a book, a a a, a bestseller, right? And um, and the one thing that I live by and die by, I mean, I would say that zindagi zinda dili ka naam hai, murda dil kya khag jia karte hain. So don't take life too seriously. enjoy have as much fun as possible don't leave the fun for later baad ka to kisne dekha yaar so you have fun now masti karni abhi karo ko bang karna abhi bang karo galtiyan karni abhi galti karo no so because you cannot bang from life later on you can bang now okay zindagi is uh, will not get you bang later on so if you have any moments to steal any moments to freak out any moments to kind of cause some trouble little bit trouble do it now okay so that you learn what 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 that does to you so that when someone does that to you you will know ki oh that's what's happening so go ahead break it bone make mistakes don't fail i mean don't 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 fear from failures and and have a life don't live for tomorrow live today plan for tomorrow but live today and when one last one. thing which i love from yes. uh, warren buffett and this is this is my all i wish i heard this you know when i was younger look around you you're in a classroom you're in a seminar you know college look around you and see maybe five most influential people that you can think of okay mm-hmm. and make there make one pointer one characteristics that you admire in that person the most okay so look at look around the five the best student maybe the best teacher maybe the principal whatever whoever you want to see and one characteristics that you really really admire in that person make a note of it and as you go along in your life give yourself 3 months 6 months a year and get that one characteristic in you guess what happens in a year you will be the most admired person having those five qualities that you admire in others and i i thought this was amazing when i heard from warren buffett so 
So look around you, find characteristics that you admire, and try to get those characters in you, and you'll be the most admired person in the group next time you're around. That's it for now, and signing off from you. Great, great words. Again, so many nuggets of gold being shared here. If I may ask uh, Mr. Roy also to share, what can you tell us? Or what can I, what can you advise our young entrepreneurs? Uh, <clears throat> mostly right now, uh, all the students who are very um, doubtful how the career will be, how their uh, path will be, it is a uh, quite common. Uh, but uh, certain things we wanted to tell all of you that as a uh, in, in this industry for such a long period, hotel business is something or hotel and hospitality is such a business which is like a, uh, for ages it is there, is not going to get over. It is only a momentary uh, pause, I would say, which we have taken. And I think everybody enjoyed this pause for um, uh, with the family. They have uh, revived back with a lot of things we have catch up. A lot of things we have been doing it for our own uh, development and betterment. The industry is going to bound back, bounce back in a very, very high manner. Just wait and see by 2022 how the situation will be. It will be like, you know, uh, much better than what it is to be in 2020. And uh, uh, obviously, the industry prospect perspective is also changing. This last two years, as we say now, we can deliver, you know, uh, one person in US, other in Delhi, I am in Bangalore and the college in Mumbai, we are delivering it. This may be two years back, we were not been thinking that it is possible, but today it is possible. So business perspective has been changed. So the hotels are also been, you know, realigning with the way, with the times it's been changed. There are many business, particularly for as this topic, uh, this today's presentation is for uh, entrepreneurship. In entrepreneurship, many, many new opportunities has come up after during this uh, pandemic or after this pandemic, which we really, really need to evaluate and ourselves and see that whether we can take this up. So look for different opportunities. Don't go by the books. Don't go by the old methods. What it is to be uh, okay. Uh, I could see there are chat box. A lot of people are there. Okay, I want to open a restaurant. I want to open up this thing. What is the? All these are many things are there. You have to think differently now. In this time, you need to really think how you can. Uh, be you can differentiate yourself with the other competition or to what is around and particularly for our in, the, in this this hotels and hospitality industry i love this industry 20s now this is almost 26 years uh, gopi myself uh, are hardcore okay salini i am taking it because she has moved to a uh, different uh, field altogether but we love this industry it has got a tremendous opportunity career wise and uh, personal growth wise, I, as I told you, I have been mentoring one IT company and IT company, that particular founder, he was telling me, boss, why don't you, you know, get IT uh, hotel people in this IT field? Because I can see the lot of, you know, energy is different. The kind of people are different. So uh, I can see this, see, even in IT also, the hotel people are required. So it's not that the only industry which is left out is the hotels and the restaurant. There are various plenty of opportunities. We have people in bank, we have people in retail, hotels, restaurant, obviously the the the, the, uh, the old uh, industries are still there. The new things which are there, you look into it, it's a fantastic uh, course, it's a fantastic uh, opportunity and the platform. We must sign out in a very, very good manner. That's all for me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Roy. Uh, well, we if we have some time just to take a couple of questions, our students have put down questions in the chat box. And if I may uh, again request uh, your perspective on this, I, I would like to take a question that has been asked by uh, Disha. Disha says that uh, I often read that rising entrepreneurs must have a mentor. Can you please shed light on the same? Uh, could I ask Mr. Nair to take this question, please? Oh, goodness gracious, that is such a, I, I don't know how I missed this. Uh, one of the advice was to seek out mentors. Mentorship is paramount. Do not ever, ever try to do anything and don't have that ego that, you know what, I know it, I'm smart, I've always been the smartest in my class and I can figure this out. No, seek out mentorship, seek out mentors and don't stick with one multiple mentorships. 
uh, there are so many aspects of of life of business challenges that'll come through so look for people who have been who have done, been there and done that and and have connections ask questions genuine curious questions as to what they did and how they did and what what mistakes they made and what they learned and that will take you places mentorship is one thing that you cannot cannot period not have that in your first chapter of your file of entrepreneurship that's one thing that you must have and i want to add on in this mentorship is not only yeah. only who are the people are good to you or they are bigger or okay those are the people you definitely have mentors can be even a smaller my daughter 7 years old she also tell me many things suddenly which i think yes these are points i can do it no so you have to the mentorship is all around us you need to really capture what is the best available things which is coming to you and obviously as uh, gopi says you must have someone whom you can follow it Yes, so I'll, I'll add Can one, you allow one, one, me to one add point. points of this? I'm so yeah, yeah, sure. Yes, yes, so, please. Sorry. Yes, please. So they say a man. So they say that a man or woman is known by the book he reads and the company he keeps, mm, right? So, that's... so, uh, so, so, do not exclude books as mentors as well. So, if you cannot reach everybody, the books also are. So, I would say that you should read books. If you don't have the habit of reading, please force yourself, force yourself to read a book a month at least, or at least two books in a year. and 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 you know find find those good nuggets of good great books that you sh- simple to read get books on and associate with great people okay so if if i'm while i'm on that uh, i'll suggest two books which i love a lot very simple reads there's a book called the alchemist uh, by paulo coelho is a brazilian writer mm-hmm. i'm sure you have re- heard about it it's a very tiny book but it's an it's an amazing book every time you read the book you get a different message out of it and the second one is who moved my cheese um but it is spencer johnson um yeah so so th- who would my cheese is very relevant for these times it's a very small book 100 pages i guess easy to get on amazon or anywhere who moved my cheese and um uh, the alchemist please guys if you can get a hands on these books read those books and get a habit of reading books um if you party have fun but get half an hour of reading time every day that'll take you places Thank Chuck. you, thank you. I think that's that's that is a lot of. Uh, I want to add on something there, there, if you yes, allow ma'am. me. Yes, ma'am. yes, ma'am. Okay. Please do. Okay, I think mentorship, like Gopi and uh, Amitava both said, have uh, extreme importance in life. You see, having your own gut feel and your own views is one thing, but there is a lot of value attached to guidance. Now. while we look at mentors at our places of work and eventually once we are settled at work what happens is our parents go into their own life and we move ahead there remains a void of a life mentor and when you reach age like ours you realize that i have nobody mentoring me on how to deal with struggles of life but struggles of life that are common to each one of us in different different ways so you know um, in that sense i'm sharing what i have done i have uh, I, i practice buddhism uh, so this is nishir in buddhism i chant in the morning for a couple of hours and in the evening as well for a couple of hours to maintain my sanity like uh, all of us need to do and dr daisaku ikeda who is the president of the organization has written books there are hundreds of books available that offer guidances on how you should deal with life at large in a way that it benefits not just yourself but others this gentleman i'm talking about is a is a recipient of 30 nobel peace prize awards poet of peace award by saudi arabia and multiple other honorary degrees by universities across the world this practice is embraced by people in 192 countries and is the sole reason a lot of people have been able to come out of their sh- shells and move beyond uh, you know uh, from from being um, from being average to scaling heights this is a mentor who has helped me get to where i am today with sanity taking things along likewise i would urge you to either connect 
with this practice or find another practice that mentors you for life how do yeah. i deal with a boss who is dominating how do i deal with a colleague who is a bully how do i come back home feeling happy at, mm. at, despite having a harrowing day at work these mm. are things that get answered as you go along and find a mentor right and i believe that what you what you have all uh, rightfully said is that, that uh, problems circumstances situations outside you are beyond your control but how you react and respond to them is in your control these practices definitely help one to calm yourself down and be able to observe these situations and deal with them in so much more a composed manner than just reacting to them haphazardly so yes uh, wonderful messages there i wish we had time to take uh, many more questions but we will have to uh, come to an end to this webinar we have overshot our times also and i know you have other commitments to take care of uh, so with all of this that you have shared with us uh, i would like to end our session for today all of our guests speakers have come with uh, diverse backgrounds diverse perspectives and have candidly shared their stories and their journey with us so i'm sure that there has been a lot of learning here perhaps for some of you there might have been aha moments where you have just realized and you know something just clicks and something just makes sense from whatever you have heard of our guest speakers and perhaps for some others this webinar has been a food for thought so take away all of the nuggets that have been shared with you ponder over these ideas and reflect on them so i ask that everyone keeps an open mind our audience today keeps an open mind to the possibilities and the potentials of your own journey on behalf of our principals dr rukshana bilimoria and chef harish suwarna all of our faculty members at anjuman and the entire student community I would like to say a big thank you to Shalini ma'am, Mr. Roy and Mr. Nair for being here today with us. Uh, of course, much. a huge, huge, huge shout out and I will not forget this to Vinita ma'am because it has been her uh, organization, her getting of all of this done, getting in touch with all of you and putting me uh, in touch with all of you and if it wasn't for her this webinar wouldn't have happened so a big shout out to vinita ma'am as well uh, thank you once again for all of you to be here to our audience have a wonderful day ahead to mr nayar good thank night you. i know it has been quite late but thank you so much for everything take care everybody and stay well yeah. bye bye thank you pretty you have been a wonderful host Thank you for thank hearing you. us out for all this while without getting thank bored. You, thank you. <laughs> thank you. No. Oh my God. I've learned so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you all. This is time team webinar signing off. Stay safe. Have a great day. Bye bye.